and gentlemen, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup number three, powered by Take TV. And today here is Nimsh. Oh man, and uh, we are going to finish group number two. B. Group number two? Uh, with the group letter B? I thought it was group number eight, but then uh, I realized it's actually B. They switched it all around. Uh, the schedule is a bit like How awkward. many <laughs> groups do we even have? Uh, I think we have eight groups. Eight groups? Yes, Whoa. we do have eight groups. For, yeah, all right. So, guys, uh, we are here. Number guy versus Lash. Two this great players. The final group of, of that, uh, the final group, the final match of the group. We have already seen four matches. We have seen uh, the first matches, then the winner's match, then uh, last time the elimination match, and this is the decider match. So, already out is Forzen. So, Forzen Forsen boys. Forzen's dead. Forzen's dead. Uh, so, like, we have the killer of Forzen here. Um, number game? Alish. Or Alish? Alish well, is dead. Number guy, one versus person? <laughs> Why did you say number guy? No, six though. <laughs> <laughs> number guy, one against uh, uh, against. Four. No, he just one against Alish. Or, am I? Wow, so it's so. Somebody one versus person. Yeah, two people won against person. Yes. Was it first? First Alish. Alish won twice against. All right, we are we are confused, guys. Anyway, the six so went through. Xixo is already in the next stage. Forzen is out, so he's a bit salty. And right now, here, the decider match between Number Guy and Alish. So whoever wins will proceed. And now we are already yeah, ready the guys to are ready. jump into the game. So uh, the, the players are playing. Like, Number Guy is playing Druid, Mage, and Warlock. And Alish is playing Druid, Hunter, and Shaman. We got the bands. Alish's mage got banned, and number guys hunter got banned. So we have two aggro decks out of the way. Well, Alish could have be playing freeze mage, uh, but he's not. But well, we've we've seen the mage, or, ha or have we? Yeah, I ex I think we saw the mage. It was a mech mage. It was a mech mage. I can remember that. I'm not sure about this. Yeah, I'm I not sure was, about anything. Today. That was a game that you didn't cast, and you, oh, you yeah. really look tired or angry. I, I can still I can't figure it out. No, no, I'm definitely not angry. <laughs> I'm might be tired. It's the time zone change, you know. Yeah. I had to fly uh, one hour and a half here, so that's like from Poland. Is that yeah? It's devastating. Oh yeah, the time zone. <laughs> and, I, and I'm totally living in the U.S. time zone. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to confirm what we see here. <laughs> I know when I'm tired. Because we went to sleep around 2, and 7 a.m., Ecop is starting to sing a song of his people, and then he wakes me up after five hours. Bad, bad Ecop. Yeah, rooming with Ecop is tough. Well, anyway, I'm glad you're here to to be the one casting with me and I'm sure we had some crazy games already and we will continue with some crazy games. We have seen the random huffer being played here by Alish and he's swinging into the face of Number Guy who is uh, now... Alish is such an excellent hunter player. Like every time I see a, a hunter player playing huffer, I know they know what's up. Like They know what's up. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're totally in control. Uh, if you're a hunter player and you have the huffer, you are the skill player over the world, you have the most skill. Well, and see, here, like, to be honest, here we see the swipe cleaning the board, but on the other hand, uh, a good news for Alish is that swipe is actually out of the way, and the snake trap might be much better than with that swipe just, you know, being somewhere there. Uh, we have a small graphical glitch with the eagle horn bow. Yeah, we will try to stay in the game as long as possible because today Blizzard uh, somehow does not like the Seed Story Cup 3, I guess, because we are having so many spectator bugs. But anyway, as long as it works with all the other cards, we will uh, just stay in the game. Alish goes for the Haunted Creeper here, plays the Steady Shot. Will he also go for a coin into Snake Trap? Yeah, I think this is a definitely good play. With uh, a Snake Trap and a one, win one minion swipe of the way, you want to deal that damage. Double Iron Beak all doesn't look that great, but on the other hand, there are taunts. You have the Eagle Hornbow. It doesn't look that great, but against Druid, it's everything you wish for. And meaning those two Iron Big Owls are in your hand, and you can draw into a charge minion any, any turn. You can now... You can now uh, draw into the Wolf Rider or the Arcane Golem, and you already have the, the Owls in your hand, so that's not also, a bad spot. Number Guy is really low on health, like 13 points of health, and you have the, those Iron Beaks. You have the Hero Power that's not going anywhere, like you are going to use it every turn. And the deck strategy that you have supports what's happening. Like you have those stones, you have that Eagle Hombo, 
and we can see juggler that was such an important draw for for alash having the snake trap set up like even with this eagle combo if the if number guy doesn't decide to go into those minions oh keeper of the girl can deal with the key, uh, with the with the juggler but let's calculate this is if he draws a kill command this game is over three plus five that's eight needs three points of damage wolf rider is over arcing golem no, wait, you will have to use heal power, so it's five, so he... Wait, Whoa! that's over! That's Quick shot! That's yeah! That was exactly the card he needed, because he didn't have mana for something for free, wow. like kill command, Arkin Golem, Wolf Rider, Quick shot is going to end this game, I believe, or not? So one of the Blackrock Mountain cards, it's it perfect is. lethal, it's perfect lethal, it's perfect and perfect the Quick lethal. shot is closing the game out here for Alish, and he goes up 1-0 against Number Guy. Oh man, what a game. That, that's the face hunters. Like, I, I had the discussion with other pro players. You might hate... Face Hunter is a deck. You might not like how it plays. You might hate playing against it. You must. You might feel bad playing the deck itself, mm. but you can't ignore it. Like the deck is just too good in Conquest. You bring two decks that you feel are good, and you bring the Face Hunter because Face Hunter can. Like there's no way to counter the deck with your whole lineup. It's just a win rate. It's. It's just. It's so consistent. Like the quality draws. Like we've seen so many times Druid having. Like we 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 said it. Like hey, if he draws this. This happens. If he draws like early game, he will win. A face Hunter just needs to draw. That's it. It draws a card. Oh, it's good. That's yeah, it, it, it's damage. Okay, another three damage. And here we go, three damage. And that's how Face Hunter works. And it's it's consistent. I believe the deck is actually uh, like it, 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 it requires skill. And I think the players are ready. Actually, the next second game is going. But with Face Hunter, like a lot of people say, hey, it's just uh, you do whatever, you just go for face. But it's not actually true. Like the the difference between a perfect, great player that can just know when to trade, when to go for face, how to deal with damage. Um, they, they, the player will have a, a higher win rate, for sure. And I think that's a very interesting discussion we have here, because many people were mourning about uh, Blizzard giving the Hunter another card with that quick shot. We have seen it in the last game, and people were always screaming for, please nerf uh, the face Hunter, and Blizzard just does not want to nerf the face hunter. Instead, it seems like they want to add more variety to it and they want to keep it alive. Oh yeah, the quick shot definitely supports the strategy for the deck. But in your personal opinion, having a deck like face hunter, every pro player, as you said, should maybe have it in the lineup. Do you think Blizzard should maybe do something against it and should maybe nerf hunter in a way? If everybody plays face hunter, well, it really depends, because uh, the tournament format is different and the ladder is different. On ladder, you can counter face hunters. You just, let's say, play warrior, and then you just farm a top 10 legend. But in the tournament format, it is a bit different. But on the other hand, hunter is only winning one game. Like, you can't 3-0 people with face hunter in conquest. Did you farm top 10 legend last season with face hunter? No, I didn't. <laughs> okay, because I, I played into Top 100 Legend and I was like, okay, a lot of Face Hunter, but it's still difficult. I yeah. didn't play Face Hunter, I played Paladin. So. Well, Paladin is bad versus Face Hunter, I believe. Depends on the build. Like, you can Depends have a good build. build yeah. you have. Anyway, we are here again with Alish against Number Guy. Alish is leading 1 0, and Number Guy brings his uh, very nice Reynard inspired Blinktron uh, Mech Mage to the table. And going up against the Shaman, this uh, match, I would say it's it's open to anybody. But one good thing about it is if you have those mirror entities and you have the Flame Tank Totem left, that's one of the nicest ways to deal with the secret. Yeah, actually Shaman versus Mech Mage is, is decent. Uh, it, it's not an easy matchup from Mech Mage perspective. You want to set up, the, you, you want to snowball, but Shaman has so many tools to stop, to dismantle the strategy of snowballing. Um, as a mech mage, so uh, like many times I play this matchup from the mech mage perspective. At some point, you just run out of cards. Like, obviously, you can snowball and win, but then I think overall shaman has an advantage. And that was a very expensive fireball here being fireball played. Fireball flamed on totem, seriously. Yeah, that's so painful. But look at the hand. That's his only option here because Alish managed to survive the early game so well and was the one left with the board position. And now he's putting on the pressure on the mech mage, and that's. A move of desperation here with the fireball on the flame tongue totem. It seems that this the shaman from Alash is so stable. 
with Thorisan on six, then uh, Alaki will be for seven next turn. Yeah, you could already just play it as a follow up. Like, even with those hexes for. Oh my god, oh and my he god. turns again, crazy again. Again? Like, he had such a great play, and right now he can't do anything. And this well, time it's so bad. And that's the, sec that's that's in the a row. second time in, in a row. row. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so crazy. Alish, what are you doing with your <laughs> and life? Number guy, look at that BN. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, wow. for Alish right now, he can just uh, kill the 5 1. And yeah, go to the face. Tell him up and face because that's what you do. Uh, yeah, that's a misplay here, but I guess he does not really care about that one damage. But that man is really angry now. No, no, like killing that is fine. Oh, yeah, right, because you would eat up five damage. Yeah, yeah uh, it just triggers that uh, next turn, sure. Yeah, but that's so crazy for Alej. Like, Alej, for in my eyes, Alej is the doomsayer now. Like, Alej is bringing the doom of Czech Republic into other countries. Yes, and now with that mirror entity lying there, you don't even really want to play Emperor Thoris then. Well, you can still airshock it, so it's something. And it's oh. not like you have other minions. Yeah, but. It does not. You're at least you're giving your opponent a five-five body. But the game changed so much right now with with that doomsayer. It's just crazy. But it's like pilot the shredder, like GVG did. Goblins, gnomes, they tinker yes. with your board state. If you're Alej, they tinker with your life, with your mind. <laughs> He's like on fi on fire. He still sees the doomsayer like cleansing the board. Uh, I, I in this situation, you're you're at an offline event. You're nervous because people are watching you. You're casted on a stream and you are going up in the elimination match, in the decider match. And then it, what happens is you get the second doom, uh, Doomsayer that really throws you off mentally. Anyway, he goes for Emperor Thorisan and will probably use his Earthshock to, to silence uh, Number Guy's Emperor now. Uh, I feel like he has to because he can't, number, he can't allow Number Guy to, to really play his hand. There are not that many minions you want to silence for um for mech mage but very interesting choice alish decides not to silence here and that will be a nice turn for number guy i guess yeah but how do you execute it like you can play mech warper and mech mage uh, like mech uh blast you mage you could go mech warper into blast mage just to trade that away and to put on pressure and keep the Thorison because I don't feel like you're in the way you you don't really have to deal with your opponent's Thorithan. And wow, he even goes unlucky with that last mage, not clearing both minions. But I would have would have loved to see him just put under pressure here. Interesting. Like now you can play that Alak here, but do you really want to? You might go for if you go for hacks, it's not also not that great. You could go for Alec here and just trade it away, trade it all away and have a body on the board. Yeah, I think it's fine Like uh, if you just use the Rockbiter with the 1-1 with the and then with Alec here, kill it so free for free and then go f uh, for face. So you clear the board and you put your opponent in a situation where he has to deal with Alec here and then you've seen one fireball already. And you do have two hexes and an Earthshock left, so definitely so answer, Shea. You might try like keep the Alakir alive and just win the game with this. That Blinktron is going to be crucial because if Alakir is on the board without his Divine Shield and uh, maybe he gets an Arcanite Reaper or something Gar like that. Yeah. Gar oh, Garhow. Oh, please don't call that. Like even something with four attack, like if he gets like Death Spite. And then he can still ping it. Yes, you're totally right. You also have the Goblin Blast Mage, so... Also, like, you really don't want to use Rock Biter if you have Alak here, but I don't think Alesh has a choice. Like, if he stalls... You can attack with Alak here into that and use your Earthshock here. You can keep the, the Rock Biter weapon if you wanted to, so you could do the trade, then Earthshock and trade that away. You would have a 3-3 three, three Alak here then on the board, but the risk of running into Frostbolt is just too high. Oh, there is a Dr. Boom, and it is green, so you do play it. Yeah, it's a Dr. Game Changer, but uh, with the Earthshock, you can deal with a bomb, and you can just hex Dr. Boom, so he has a way to deal with it, but he's he's probably going to be in, behind in uh, card advantage. He exactly needed that. Wow! I wanted to say he needs a big minion. He needs yeah. like a Dr. Boom for himself, a Neptulon, or a Fire Elemental. Basically, just keep those minions hexed, and deal six damage every turn with Alakir. Keep Alakir alive. And it's looking great for Alash. He's coming back even though he got that Doomsayer. The only question is like... Maybe he could just attack for six. Just keep the frog. 
So a, a bit of a sequencing uh, question here, but I don't think it really matters that much. Yeah, he even wants to trade the bomb away. Whatever happens, even if it hits for four onto a minion, it, it does not die. But it doesn't hit any minion. It just hits face. Alesh is really happy that it hit face. Like he, right now, he needs those, those minions to to keep the pressure. And what are the weapons then? There's a Gorhal. You called it. You called it two turns ago. Whoa. Wow. And then Ogre Wormel. Yeah, that's also not too bad. That's at least twice four damage on anything. And with just uh, minions on the board that have four HP, uh, you have a nice way to trade whatever you hit. Well, number guy got the stealth oh. spare part. That might be very important versus a possible... But Anthony. that Gorhal, please, are you a magician? How did you do that? Well, I just call cards and this happens, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. Well, Alish has to go for phase, I believe. Uh, at this point, he still has Crackle in the deck. Denying the mech makes sense as well. I feel like you have to... Oh, he tried to take oh, with this with, with this board, I like going for phase. You still have that, that Wormhole, so you know that you're very close. And do you Hex? You might hex the taunts, so like a big taunts if there is one. He killed. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, he should have maybe kept the hex. Yeah, or, or deny the mech, like getting the four four out. Or maybe he did that because he wants to save the fire elemental. Like um, with the four four alive, then yeah. the fire elemental is is dead. The fire blast. Totally. So it's gonna be interesting to see if he not, what the if he plays the blast mage here, what he's gonna hit with that. First of all, he gains another spare part. Uh, the emergency oh, he gets cooler. A, he gets wow, a cooler. That's, that's very important here. Can like number guy start thinking about a lethal situation? He knows that Alish has no cards. Oh, what is is this the doomsayer for the first no, time? No, 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 no. He's raising his hand, but it's not a doomsayer. That was so stressful for Lash, but there's the coolant. Yeah. And Number Guy is going to start. But you can damage. still draw a crackle and hit face. Oh, oh my god! Wow, Alish is a very emotional guy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> like, and he is so happy about it. Number Guy is definitely upset about seeing that. Yeah. Well, Unfortunately, you can't really play that zombie chow here. Yeah, it is a blank, but you know, this board is. Hmm. Alish is. Alish knows there are no heals in the mech mage. You basically sure. don't heal. You you win by damage. So here, if he, hmm, he doesn't have to attack really. Well, but yeah, he could keep the weapon. How much damage is there incoming? It's twelve thirteen with the hero power. So possible eight. I would also keep it because there's always the chance if you draw into a crackle that you have lethal. Well, if you attack face, then it, uh, then if you draw into Crackle... Yeah, but anyway, uh, number guy is the one who has to trade here. Ah, oh, the Wormhole actually cheated Alash and he killed uh, the mage. He wanted to deny the mech. Well, this is an awkward board state and uh, Zombie Chow... <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to say Chow to the Zombie Chow. Anoyotron, wow, that's very important. A late game Anoyotron. Uh, we know Alex has a Doom, uh, doom Hammer. Yes. So Anoyotron, it is really important. No, like, or does he have to? I know Sixo has a Doom Hammer for sure. I'm not sure about Alex's version here. But anyway, now Alex is running out of cards a bit. And again, he needs something like Neptulon, Dr. Boom. He needs to put something big on the board. Well, he needs something, and such Belcher is not terrible. But yeah, it's, it's not helping that much. It's decent. Does he even go for the zombie chow in order to get I past that taunt? Yes. Yeah, I think at this point you do go with zombie chow because I don't see a way to kill it. And most of the cards that um, Mage is going to draw are passive. Like Max, you just play them and pass. Yeah. So with zombie chow, you know it's not going to die that easily. And Belcher is going to stop those minions. On the other hand, drawing into the snow chugger is also not too good for number guy here. He also has to draw into Antonidas. That is what he wants to draw. So it seems like situation is favoring Alish for now. It, it depends on the draws. I think it's all about the top decks here. Yeah, but then Alish has 16 points of health, and the guys went back to the if drain number board guy with draws, If number guy, number guy survives, and we know that he has some six surviving skills, and he draws into an Archmage Antonidas, I think this game goes to him. 
Have we seen both Dr. Booms? Yes. No, okay. we have just seen number guys, Dr. Boom. Oh, so like Alesh still has a Dr. Boom top deck. Yes, Is it's it definitely possible for him. And he's got 14 cards left. Oh, but number guy already goes for the finicky cloak field here. I don't really know why. Another such Belcher off the top is important here. Wow, that's crazy. So the Sludge Belchers are saving the day here. Yeah, they not only like develop the board and build up a better situation for Alash, they also protect Alash from a possible damage. Kami Harvest Golem is a blank. Come on, give me something else. <laughs> That's what number guys are thinking, probably. What uh, do you think about Harvest Golem in, uh, in Mech Mage? It's not that popular. Yeah, some people prefer the Spider Tank, some people prefer the Harvest Golem. Uh, it depends on the version. Well, uh, after a board clear, usually uh, after the Harvest Golem dies, you have the damaged Golem left. But with the Spider Tank, you have immediate damage on the board and you have that free attack, and I guess that's crucial. So I prefer the Spider Tanks personally, but uh, I can also understand people going for the Harvest Golem. Yeah, it is still a very decent Mac. And uh, it just dies twice, could deal more damage uh, over time, possibly. I like it, but I don't like it in this situation, and I'm yeah. sure Number Guy <laughs> is also not that happy about getting it. So you can't really go through. Can you just kill? Do you just kill the Belcher here? I guess you have to take uh, the most damage of the board, and like that, I would take the Sledge Belcher. Well, yeah, you can freeze it and taking that, so you deny five damage coming in. Oh, and there it is. Alice draw Dr. Boom. How many can he, he actually is getting only one bomb here? Yeah, but I guess he doesn't really care because he's setting up lethal with that. Yeah, with that, he's just going to win next turn. And uh, Clockwork wow, late, Gnome. Gurm, late game Clockwork Gnome. Number I can still heal the Clockwork Gnome to get the coolant and freeze the boom yes. or just concede. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, he could have done that. And that means Alish is going up 2-0 here against Number Guy. Well, that's such an important uh, win because right now he only needs to win with the Druid. Super fast Hunter game, uh, very aggressive Shaman, even though he got the Doomsayer again. And now with the Druid, and Druid, as we said, is a deck that can win versus everything, can lose to everything. But I think right now with Torison, Druid is extremely strong. Like this is one of the MVP decks coming to this tournament. Yeah, Druid has a win rate. Uh, usually in uh, in many matchups, the win rate of a Druid is over 50 percent. And as we already explained, if you have the Druid left in, in, in three games upcoming, you have a high chance of winning one game with that. And that's everything Alish needs here to survive the group stage and to go on into the next stage of the Seed Story Cup here. Yeah, so like if Alish wins this game, uh, Druid versus something the number guy brings up, he's going to advance he to 6 so. Some people already bring up their worst matchup first because it decides and they want to quicken it up. Number guy chooses, uh, chooses to go with the mage and usually uh, it's a mech mage, so the mech mage is favored here against the druid. Is it a mech mage? Yeah, I think uh, I remember it from another game. He brought the mech mage to the table and there we go. It's a oh. mech mage. You have such a great memory. Oh yeah, I'm awesome, I know. <laughs> All right, so Mech Mage versus Druid, one of the worst matchups, but I've seen Druid win this. Like, if Druid gets yes. a, a good curve, like Wild Grove, and is, if Druid is able to stop the Mech Mage from overextending, that's good. But then, if Mech Mage snowballs, the only tool you have is what swipe. So, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. Uh, we are going to, like, restart the game quickly. Uh, restart the, the Observer mode quickly. The game is running, the game is going good. I can see Alish. Yeah, Alish still emotional but concentrated right now. So nothing too crazy happening here. Well, Alish knows that if he loses this match, it doesn't mean much. Like, he knows he's just playing a bad matchup. If he can steal the win, it's great. But look at that number guy already has a big board. We don't even have a swipe here. We don't even have a taunt. And that uh, Annoyatron together with the freeze is going to be so crucial here. And even though we could see Lothab come down. Oh, I guess you have to play. Well, if you look, shapeshift doesn't really work. So normally you could shapeshift and kill it with yeah. life. But you could also think about Shadow of Next Ramas. Your opponent has uh, three cards left. Uh, maybe you want to take that Mech Warper off the board to deny further damage. But uh, we see a lot of mechs being played. So Alish goes for the big 5-5 five -five lower up here. And number guy just uh, puts on more pressure and more pressure. Goes to the face, has the Frostbolt lining up in his hand. 
now thinks about to trade into the shade of next Ramos. I would agree to that. Trade the shade away, go to the face with the Mech Warper. I would keep the Mech Warper here, or would you trade the Mech Warper? I, well, you can go for face with everything, actually. Like, you have such a great advantage, and I would ex the only card I would expect is Swipe. I, I would not with Frostbolt. I would not do so, because then the Shade of Next Ramos is going to trade so good, and I think it's better to trade it away here. It's fine, but uh, still, Namurga is in uh, such a great position here. But the but trading Force of Nature. Force of Nature is uh, something that Alish can use to, to maybe stabilize. Maybe he should play it, run one tree and into the Annoyatron. What about just... Well, the thing is that using Force of Nature here, he can clear some part of the board, and then starting from turn 7, he will be able to start healing himself up. Yeah. Number guy doesn't have that many cards, but he has Mirror Entity. Yeah, and if he plays that next turn, you don't want to play your Ancient of Lore. Anyway, Alish goes for uh, that and he trades some stuff away, but the the water elemental is still left here for number guy. And he keeps on pushing places, the mirror entity. He prepares for turn seven, Doctor Boom, Ancient of Lore. I like it. There's not, not that many cards uh, on turn six for the Druid to play, but before turn seven, you definitely want to set up the mirror entity. And I guess now Alish is checking for a counter spell, and now he finds out, no, it's no counter spell. He draws a Druid of the Claw in cat form, that's something you could give your opponent because you can trade it away easily right now. You can deny the mirror entity with uh, Druid of the Claw, but still it's like a 5 mana cost. That's so many expen uh, so expensive, yeah. So for Alish, he needs to deal with this mirror entity this turn, and then next turn he needs to start healing, and uh, he needs to start healing fast. You can't go for the Shade of Next Ramos here because you have to... Ex uh, uh, to to <laughs> expect a fireball in number guy's hand here. So going for that shade of next Ramos would set up lethal next turn. So uh, I feel like you have to go for the Druid of the Claw in cat form, just trade it away instantly and hope that you survive long enough to, to use your Ancient of Lore for the heal up. Well, there's seven damage incoming with Frostbolt. You're still dead to Fireball. So that's, the, that's what you have to do. And Alish makes the correct call. He is going to trade cat for if cat. He's, he could also think about Innervate here to stay out of lethal range with the Fireball, and I guess that's a smart play to do it like that. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, fireball and uh, Hero Power is then... And you are still going to, to play those engines. So, number guy draws a blank. Yeah, I, I would still put it on the board but with the Mad Scientist, because Druid has big struggles to deal with, with huge boards. Oh yeah, definitely. You, at this point you want to... You could also get rid of the lower tip. That's, that's another option, right. Well, you know that you have 5 points of damage, 6 points of damage coming next turn. But the thing now is, if you draw into a fireball, if Alish first of all plays a taunt, and you would draw your fireball, it's not lethal anymore. So, uh, the thing for Alish here, he needs a taunt, but playing that Ancient of Lore, first of all he heals up for five and then goes for Innervate into Shade of Naxxramas and is all out with that. Just one sh uh, one Ancient of Lore left in his hand. Yeah, but it's Alish is still... Uh, there is no, no mech for the Blast Mage. Yeah, it's unfortunate. He wants to trigger that Tinker Town Technician and uh, the Blast Mage here, but it's not possible. On the other hand, he, he can just play them and uh, yeah. just even go for face here and just play those minions and Alish with one card in hand. What is the card that he can draw? to stop this board from overrunning him. Ancient of War. Ancient of War is something, but then, yeah, that's not but bad. But that taunt, the Druid of the Claw is already doing some, some, nice, uh, some nice taunt here. He is definitely doing a good job. You can now trade away some of those minions. Uh, I did not really figure out now what you want to trade first. I guess you... Have we seen double mirror energy already? We have seen one, I'm sure, about one, but it could already be two. What's annoying for Alesh is that if he if he kills a 3-3, free free, if he kills a 2-2, two two, then he gets Mirror Entity, and uh, the 5-4 is going to kill him. But maybe just playing Druid of the Claw as a cat. Or maybe you still go for the heal this turn, Ancient of Lore, heal yourself up, keep the Druid of the Claw, maybe you draw into another 5-drop next turn, and heal up. 
and trade it away because it doesn't really matter if you take five damage. I would trade definitely. I would trade the Goblin Blast Mage away and also maybe the Shade into the Vanilla th uh, Three Three, even even though it does not feel good. I feel like you have to, and you're denying the damage here. And next turn you can taunt up. It seems like Alej is missing one point <coughs> of damage somewhere to clear it efficiently because he, he can't kill Water Elemental. He can't kill uh, Blast Mage with the Shade. So this is really awkward for him. That freeze uh, being developed here with the water elementals and the snow trigger. That's a really nice uh, thing here. But number guy again has the harvest golem in the late game. This time is not as bad as last time, but still not really having a big impact here on the game. Harrison Jones, there's the second five drop. So yeah, that's the five drop. Turn. I hoped for Alish to draw a Sludge Belcher that would put him in a much better position. But with with Harrison, that's something. That's a body that you can use. But there's the fireball, and, and that's, that's lethal it. here. Now, well, Number Guy waited so many turns to actually get the fireball, and Alish was in a, such a bad position with 30. By not playing Harrison Jones, he could have prevented that. But I, I guess think, I think to. you just have to go for it. Yeah, you have to play a minion to come back, but still, Alish knows that that was a very bad matchup, and. Um, Magmage is now out, and he needs to win with the Druid against a Druid or a Warlock. Yeah, and I think... Oh, the, the players are already ready, so here. Very quick that we are jumping into the next game. I might have to rejoin. So, the next game is going to be Druid versus Warlock. The Warlock, the number guy is playing, is a Handlock with Leroy and with Power of Wallmix, so kind of like a combo with Torison. Uh He's trying to bring back the old Nice thing. memory, too. Remembering that number guy is playing that handlock version, and yeah, I would. W what player would you give the edge here? Well, we see the big game hunter already for the druid. He has the coin. He has a doctor boot. I like up. druid in this matchup overall. Like even without being a hunter, druid has ways to deal with twilight drakes, with with the giants, and heck, can can cheat a bit with like um, wild growth as well. So coming into this matchup, I would prefer to be the druid. Okay, in tournaments, I used Handlock to counter Druid. I did that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I did that as well. What was the point that make you, made you stop? <laughs> well, at some point, like, having a double combo and being super aggressive, people started playing double BGH as well because of Dr. Boom. And yeah, but those times are, are over now, so I, I guess the, the one big game hunter, there's just one big game hunter in the list, uh, at least that's what I expect. And with just that, uh, it's really crucial that he has it in hand and he already has the silence ready here. He could even go for the innervate to take easy care of that Twilight Drake here. I so it's it's important, I guess. I don't think you use innervate. Like, it is very important to have the Keeper of the Grove to keep that Twilight Drake. But then I don't think you really innervate because you can innervate Dr. Boom next Yeah, turn, turn 5 Dr. Boom, that's way better. You can hope that your Keeper of the Grove will trade with that Twilight Drake. I yeah. think... You might decide to attack Twilight Drake with Shade of Nostramus, but then again, because like of sh because of Shadow Flame. But then again, if Shadow Flame is getting used here, I would be happy. So, yeah, it prevents a huge Shadow Flame coming down. But first of all, we do see the Mountain Giant being played, and that interrupts the turn a bit. So maybe we will see turn six coin into into Doctor Boom because now you are fancying that big game hunter and Alish. Yeah, I think there is no reason not to play the big hunter. Just yeah. giving it so much advantage. Like even if you play Doctor Boom right now, would you reveal the shade then? Would you go to the face with the shade? Uh, for four mana, turn six after big game hunter, yes. Because no dark dark bomb is not killing it, and I think so too. Because you have to expect a watcher shadow flame maybe, or. Hellfire into... Oh, no. Hellfire he is not really killing it. That's yeah, why... Yeah, he I'll can target it with the... I was uh, thinking about Hellfire Mortal Call, but if it's unveiled... Yeah, but if, like, if they target it with Hellfire uh, or Dark Bomb Mortal Call, I'm fine with that. This is two cards, and this yeah. is not that likely. And I still have... Well, with, with Dark Bomb, the BGH is still alive. With Hellfire, I guess it, it, it's dead. But then I was able to deal... With, like, Hellfire deals three points of damage. Alish also thinks that you should attack with the Shade here, and will he? Well, I hope he will also use his hero ability. Swings to the face once more, so Molten Giant would now cost 8 uh, eight mana, yes. But first of all, well, 
the smoke. Yeah, a simple savage roar. I'm just thinking. I'm just trying to calculate how much damage Alash can deal if he gets a savage roar. Right now, uh, a number guy has to think about savage roar. Like we know that uh, there is no savage roar, but it can be there. And even if not, uh, hmm. double mortal coil here, and he draws Emperor Force. Huh? What else is there in such big hands? It's hard to really see what is in there. It seems like um, numbers guy hands really clunky. The, well, because he has to play Defender of Argus on for four mana, it's just it yeah, looks bad. never feels right. So this turn, I would go for Doctor Boom and just trade because you don't really want to deal more damage to number guy. You don't want him to allow to play the Molten Giant next turn. Yeah, and I like it. And also, there's double multi giants. Such a great read for for Alash. Just he knows the matchup. He knows how to play. Is there a way to clear this? Yes. You no. <laughs> yes. No. Uh, you could play Sun Fury Protector with power, power overwhelming, and shadow. but that's not even enough to take care of Doctor Boom. So then Doctor Boom is going to deal seven at least. So you're going to drop to eleven. The plus the bombs. Seven plus eight would be fifteen here, and the bombs, if they hit, to, I, I would say, is lethal already. Because the bombs hitting to the face for three is more than likely. Yeah. And next turn you can more than eight, average. eight damage here with 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 those two with the swipe and the druid of the claw. So now the question is: Is there any way, any other play than just power into Sun Fury? You could uh, think about the anti cubot here. Anti cubot Sun Fury. But that's another play that does not really feel right. And if you're then uh, facing a savage roar, or well, right now number guy is actually facing elimination from the tournament with Alish positioning himself. The rope is running, the fuse is going. Can number guy make a play? And I took a look at his face, and he does not look happy. That's a tough turn, though, and he goes for the. Life tap here draws a Sylvanas that he can't play and then heals up with the anti cubot. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's calculate. We do have six damage here 10, 19, 23 damage. 23 damage if I did not Isn't miscalculate. Wait, 15 plus 8 is 23, yes. So Alash is one damage of lethal. He could try with the bombs. Yeah, if he actually gets. Uh, if the bomb hits phase 4 2, it's already enough. But. Ah, oh, that's, that's unfortunate. That's probably the worst for Alash. <laughs> but I would still go for it. We have seen one heal bot uh, next turn. No Jirax is possible. Even if Jirax is, then you don't have any board clear. So I would still go for the Druid of the Claw, Innervate into Swipe. Next turn, you can still use your Keeper of the Grove. Or maybe you... Yeah, you can still yeah. use the Keeper of the Grove. How much, how much damage is it with Innervate and Swipe? Another 10, 18, 22. He just lost one damage. Yeah, so damage. if you, you just seen the heal bot, you can actually go for it. You don't have to, but you can. Or you draw more cards and draw into the Oh, combo, now you definitely can go for it. Like, you can go for face, because you do have... Oh, do you? No, you don't have lethal. All right, I like it. I like it. You just... Alish takes his time. He plays around. But now we will see what's your, what's your Shadow Flame, and that's kind of devastating. Because otherwise he would have won, and with Watcher Shadow Flame now, well, Watcher Power Overwhelming Shadow Flame, that's a whole board clear. Yeah, but that's a lot of cards being spent to clear the board, and that's the whole turn. But and still, I guess, well, we know that he would have won the game by doing the play already, and now he, he stays in the game longer than, than needed. But on the other hand, if that would be that double Molten Giant and the heal bot, then you don't win. Like, you can't... Or a Farseer, you know, like... There's but you have seen one heal bot already, and yeah. then... But why take chances if you can just draw more cards and position yourself better? Yeah. I mean, there, this, I think this is just a different line of play. It's, I don't think it was correct or incorrect. Yeah, there are aggressive players like me or control players like you. Well, I'm not <laughs> the control player. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I we all know that you're the, the king of zoo. <laughs> I'll definitely take the chance and go for the aggressive one. Yeah. Hellfire, not really helpful, especially after Lothab. So number guy as well, I want to say he's survival guy today yeah. for me. And again, once more, it's all about survival. And he has a Thorisan. He has he can't play uh, those molten giants, unfortunately. Even though for five if he draws, then he's on seven mana. No, couldn't play them both. With seven mana, he can play one. Just like uh, with Sun Fury, that's five. He needs something for two as well. 
But then if you're facing a Keeper of the Grove and you have to expect that on turn 9 and just... Well, you have seen one already. What about... I was thinking fa it can Faceless do something here, but then again, Lamberga is in a weird spot because he wants to be the one being aggressive. He wants to win the game with the combo and Lure, but he wasn't able to snowball. Like, whatever he played got countered. Twilight Drake got silenced. Giant got killed. He was able to clear the board, but he used one part of the combo already. Like, he used one part of Overwhelming, so he's in a very tough spot, and the time is running out again. He needs to make a decision fast uh, uh, if he's going to tap. No Sylvanas taunt. Wow. That's good, but there is silence waiting. There so is silence, and that's hitting brutally. That's eight. The, with second innervate, that, that's how much mana is this? This is 13 points of mana, nine 11. left. 11. Just, just that's one innervate. So. Oh, there's one innervate. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, like, I look at swipe. So seven mana left. That's uh, eight. It's not lethal. No, unfortunately not. But uh, you could try to draw into a Savage Roar. Then you, you can go for face now. Like this is the moment. Like yeah. you know, you have so and much. And you have damage. to double swipe follow up. Yeah, even with Jaraxxus, you know that you will have enough. Even using that hero bar to deal one more damage. Two points of health. If Number Guy draws the heal bot now. But he doesn't. <laughs> no, there's no heal bot, but there is a taunt giver and double molten giant. Uh, yeah, still. that doesn't really matter with double swipe. So is there a way for him to survive here? I don't see it. Like, he, he will have to heal. He could get three big taunts out. With the faceless manipulator, you could get another 9-9 nine -nine molten giant. Double swipe. Number guy is eliminated from, from this tournament. And Alish is going to advance with 6-0. Yeah. Double Molten Giants sure looks good. It looks it looks so great. Maybe number guy you know the the thing now is he thinks he can stay in the game and he's like, Okay, I have the play, I have big taunts. He knows please, please he just no wants to take he just wants to take the headphones. He knows what's up. Please no swipe. Well Oh, oh BM <laughs> Missing with a swipe. BM no, he has here. two swipes, so Alish <laughs> is going to advance. Wow. Alish is really emotional. He stood up. Yeah, he went all in there with the BM. <laughs> oh man, what a series. What a series. What a series and what a great great group today that we were able to cover. And it was a pleasure for me to cover group B. And advancing now, you already wrapped it up. Xixo and Alish in a very tight series here against Number Guy. Some great games. Unfortunately, Forzen and Number Guy both eliminated from the tournament. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will get informed. Uh, at 8 o'clock, uh, the show will resume, and we will show you some more nice Hearthstone action. Prepare for the world's finest Hearthstone, I would say. We have the world's best players here. We yeah, have Hamas, we have Strivegrow, we have Nymph. And we have Frodan playing versus Lothar, I believe, on this stream. Not on the stream. I guess on the Somewhere. other stream. Somewhere. On the main stream, on you can watch stream. Frodan, the caster. Everybody knows you can watch uh, Frodan play because maybe he's also a good Hearthstone player. Not oh, he definitely a good is a talker. good Hearthstone player. Okay, so you know that. That's good. And uh, thank you guys for watching the B stream. We will be back on 8 o'clock once again so everybody knows it. And now uh, take a little break as well. And see you guys.